Good morning, Northside Online. We're so glad you've chosen to be with us today for the live stream. Don't forget to say hi in the chat so we know you're here. And also don't forget to take a moment to fill out a connection card sometime during the service so we can get to know you better and provide any information you may need. One week from tomorrow will be the kickoff for this year's VBS at Northside. It will run June 7th through the 11th, and it's not too late to sign your kids up or sign up to volunteer. All you need to do is follow the VBS link on your screen to register. We hope to see you there. If you've been thinking about paying us a visit here at the church, we want to remind you that we have services every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, 9.20, and 10.40. The 8 o'clock service is our classic service featuring hymns, while the 9.20 and 10.40 services both offer contemporary worship. Birth through elementary programming is available in our kids' corner at the 9.20 and 10.40 service times, and middle through high school programming is available in the upper and lower rooms at 9.20. Tomorrow is a special yet solemn day where we remember the sacrifices made by the ones who protect our country and our freedoms. We hope this Memorial Day is more than just another holiday, but an occasion where we can intentionally take some time to reflect on our service members, both active and retired, but especially those who pay the ultimate price. On behalf of Northside, we say thank you.
waking up to kingdom come see the hope of heaven shining like the rising sun now forever lifted up from death to life there's no fear in love and no darkness in his endless life Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on the Savior, see the image of love, sing his praises. Love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. What an amazing way to get our hearts focused where they go, isn't it? Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us. If it's your first time here, welcome. If you are not connected very much in our different platforms, we do have a few different ways that you can keep up to date with what's going on. We have our church app that you can download and follow the directions on the screen, or there's a QR code on the chairs in front of you, or we also have our website where everything is listed to keep you up to date. We also want to make sure that while you're checking those out that you fill out the connection card. Please let us know you are here, how we can connect with you, if we can help you with your spiritual walk, and if you have any prayer requests, we want to be praying for you this week. So please make sure to share those with us and our team will be on it for you. We have Isaac who is going to be out at the Connection Center and the Next Steps table. If you would like to talk to him about anything going on or learning more, he would love to have a chance to talk with you after the service. Also, next week we have VBS and it's going to be an amazing experience for our kids. It's called Rocky Railway. If your kids are not signed up yet, please, we'd love to have them here. It's a great opportunity for them to spend time with each other and learn more about Jesus. We also need lots of volunteers. If you are sixth grade and up and you have any interest in helping change the lives of kids for a week, it's a lot of fun. It's not a lot of stress and we'd love to have you on the team. Thank you so much again for being here to worship with us. Let's continue worshiping. First Peter 2.24 says he bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. I encourage you to join with us in singing praise for the cross. I would be hopeless without your good. I would be desperate without your love, slave to the darkness, if it wasn't for the cause. You have won me with your kindness, 
may be easy or difficult for us to sing in this room. I imagine there are some of us that are going through some things right now that it's just hard to say, God, I, I see your goodness in this situation because it's really challenging to see how he could possibly be using it for good. But then there's probably some of us who can who are maybe on the mountaintop right now and you can say, God, you are so good. I can see your hand in my life and God, I just love you for your goodness. Neither of those outlooks are wrong and the words of this song are appropriate for both of them because maybe we need to just express, God, I just can't see how you could possibly be using this, what's going on right now for good. But I trust you. I trust your goodness. I trust your faithfulness. I trust your promises. So if that's you, if you're in the valley today, I want to encourage you to just sing that in faith. But if you're on the mountaintop, I want you to just think about all the ways that God has been good and faithful to you. And with every breath that you're able, you just express that goodness in this place. We're going to sing that chorus again all my life every voice in here let's lift it up let's lift up his goodness
Let it take my breath away A million angels fall Face down on the floor All to echo holy is the Lord My heart can't help but sing It's also important that we have this time in our services as Jesus prescribed so that we can remember his sacrifice and what he did for us on the cross. It says in scripture that Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body that was broken for you. And he took the cup and he said, this is my blood spilled for you. And we have this time set aside each week in remembrance of that. And in remembrance of the fact that because he was willing to go to the cross and he was risen again, we have the hope of eternity with him. So as we take this moment, these few moments, to focus in on him, I encourage you to not let this slip by, but give him all of your attention, all of your remembrance in this moment. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for the opportunity to do this communion. And we thank you that you are willing to take the initiative and take the first steps in reconciling us to you. And even when we didn't deserve it, God, you sent your son for us. And God, we thank you. We rejoice in that. So God, now in this moment, we just pray that that our hearts and our minds are turned completely to you and what we have because of what Jesus did. We thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
we want to thank you again for joining us in worship this morning, for sharing this time with us, and for sharing all of your talents and gifts that God has given you with us. If you have an offering you'd like to give today, we do have three ways you can do that. You can do it online through our app, or we do have envelopes and drop boxes at the back of the sanctuary. Also, please don't forget to fill out that connection card. We really, truly do want to know how we can help you in your spiritual walk and what we can be praying for you on this week. Um, we also encourage an intentional act of kindness each month because we believe if our community knows we are for them, that's going to show them that God is for them. And so this month, we are encouraging you to continue honoring and recognizing the educators in your life, whether it's an actual teacher, a tutor, or anyone that has taught you. Please let them know how much they mean to you. I guarantee you they will definitely appreciate hearing it from you. Thanks again for being with us this morning. Go ahead and open up your app. Go to the sermon notes as Sid brings us the message, Flirting and Fragility. privilege to live for our Lord and to die for him as well. So wrote Mehdi Dabaj to his son from an Iranian jail cell. He was raised in a Muslim family. He became a Christian in the 1950s, later becoming a pastor. In 1983, he was arrested and charged with apostasy for leaving Islam and becoming a Christian. Imprisoned without a trial, he was held in solitary confinement for two years and systematically tortured. He ended up serving almost 10 years in prison. When he finally came to trial in December 1993, he declared, I am not only satisfied to be in prison for the honor of his holy name, but am ready to give my life for the sake of Jesus, my Lord. There's probably not many countries that are more hostile to Christianity than Iran. Yet he would say bold words like that. Soon he was sentenced to execution. The sentence would have been carried out except for the intervention of Haik Hasvespian, the leader of evangelical Christians in Iran. Risking his own life, Bishop Hasvespian launched an international campaign for the sentence of Mehdi Dabaz to be overturned. In January 1994, Dabaz was released from prison a few days before his execution day. Soon after that, Bishop Hosvespian disappeared. Twelve days later, his corpse was identified by his son. The body had been stabbed 26 times. For the next few months, Mehdi Dabaj traveled across Iran, encouraging fellow believers and preaching the gospel of Jesus. On June 24, 1994, he was abducted. On July 5, 1994, his body was found in a park in West Tehran. The article called the church in iran that i read and researched it said that more iranians have become christians after 1979 both inside iran and among the diaspora that at any other time in Israel, iran's history since the muslim invasions of the seventh century so for 1400 years there'd never been a revival like this one in iran uh, they couldn't meet in church buildings like ours no, they have an extensive network of house churches. And these house churches grow bit by bit. No one knows the exact number of Christians today in Iran, but we know that it's growing. We know that because of people like Mehdi Dabaj and Bishop Hasvespian, people who would consider their life worthy to be sacrificed for the growth of Christianity that the church is thriving in Iran today even though you can't see it and measure it directly. One man dies, another man dies, the gospel spreads, the church grows. This is nothing new. Jesus spoke about this in John 12, 24 when he said, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed but if it dies, it produces many seeds. One seed is planted, then it dies. From its death, a vast harvest grows. 
we all love the harvest but we're not crazy about the dying it helps to remember that when jesus spoke those words he was talking about his own death out of his death came forth many seeds millions and millions of them sprouting up in eternal life so that 20 centuries later the worldwide christian community numbers over two billion one man dies seeds arise the word spreads thus the pattern is set for all the followers of jesus the next verse in john 12 says the man who loves his life will lose it while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life we're going to talk about living and dying today we're going to talk about what it means to die not so much physically but to die to self to die to this culture what does it mean to live for a purpose bigger than ourselves how much do you love your own life pastor debage answered it clearly when he said what a privilege to live for our lord and to die for him as well his purpose was wrapped up his purpose had been merged into living for jesus and if necessary dying for jesus could we say the same thing i would argue today that the reason so many people are damaged so many people are discouraged so many people are depressed so many people that are just wandering through life is because they don't have a purpose living without purpose is not living today we're going to look at uh, second corinthians chapter 4 uh, verses 10 through 12 and it tells us first that we are always dying we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. You think about that, what does it mean? We carry around the death of Jesus? Maybe it helps you to know the Greek text should actually say the dying of the Lord Jesus. So we carry around the dying of the Lord. We, we're not carrying around the decay, the, the rotted of death. We're, we're carrying around, we have to realize we have to own the purpose for the dying what was the purpose why did jesus christ himself die he had to why because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god we you me we sin and i'll tell you it's easy to start thinking better of ourselves it's easy to start uh, forgetting that we sin and maybe it's because you've gotten better at not doing the things you're not supposed to do sins of commission that's what we normally think of when we talk about sin but just as real are sins of omission not doing the things we should not witnessing not reading the bible not praying not doing the things that we should and all of those things all of those choices we make to do our thing instead of God's thing, that's sin. And that sin causes a problem. If God is just and holy, then that sin must be separated from God. And it means that there has to be death for the life to come back. You see, just at the right time, while we were still powerless, Jesus Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When Paul says we carry around the dying of the Lord Jesus, he's saying we carry around the responsibility. The reason Jesus had to die was because of my sin. Until we own that, we will never truly live and that introduces death into the world every sin brings death now we think and mostly go to that fact of physical death but let me suggest to you that sin causes damage 
in your marriage relationship. Sin causes damage in your family relationship. Sin causes damage in your self-image. Sin causes damage to your body as you do things you shouldn't be doing. Sin. And until we own it, we can't start living. The Bible says as we understand our sinfulness, we need to confess and repent of it. We need to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We need to call on his name to be saved. We need to be baptized. And the, the Bible has this image of the old selfish, self-centered person being buried in the water and a new creation in Christ rises up. With the forgiveness of sins promised, life returns, reborn, and the gift of the Holy Spirit comes to live. And let me suggest... The Spirit comes to help us remember that we must die daily in order to live. Dying and living. It's all throughout the Scriptures. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Truth is, we're always dying, but at the same time, we're always living if we choose to walk with Christ. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his body or his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So we carry around the dying, but we also can uh, carry around, can evidence the life in us. Maybe you've heard of the Cotton Patch Gospel. Down where I'm from, a lot of folks have. It's written in Southern English and idioms written by a man named Clarence Jordan around the mid-1900s. And it is a beautiful, I think, although not exactly, uh, you can't always trust the translation, but the way it puts things jumps out at me. And when he translates verse 11, this same verse you've got before you, he says it this way, We who live for Jesus always flirt with death in order that Jesus' life may be all the more evident in our fragile flesh. Now, some of you thought as you saw the sermon title today, I was going to be talking about relationship advice, flirting and fragility. No, that's a totally different concept. Listen to it again. We who live for Jesus always flirt with death in order that Jesus' life may be all the more evident in our fragile flesh. You say... Well, how do we flirt with death? Let me suggest that you flirt with death of your popularity when you're faithful to Jesus out front. A lot of us are pretty good at covert Christianity. When we're around people that maybe aren't uh, open to Christianity, we hide it flirting with death means that you're not ashamed of the gospel flirting with death means that you're not ashamed to be inconvenienced flirting with death means that you will be making those good moral choices even if others make fun of you you'll choose not to take that drink or have that toke you'll you'll choose to honor Jesus if you die to yourself and live for him you see it's in this living that we make choices every day that reflect upon our witness that reflect upon our purpose that reflect upon how we truly live and that's what we need to see that it's in that choosing It's in that choosing that we learn to die to self and truly live. Look how Paul put it at chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians. Therefore, in order to keep me from coming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Now, the thorn, we don't know what it was. Some think poor eyesight. uh, Some think allergies. I I happen to think it was allergies. But the, the, the exact cause of this thorn is not so important i want you to think about the concept of the thorn he's given god allows for him to have a struggle god allows for him to suffer to have a thorn 
Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will, all the more, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. There is a purpose in realizing we're human. There is a reason we must grasp that we have fragile flesh. And let me say to you that it is a thorn for you in your social life sometimes to be faithful to Christ and not to be making those compromises to fit in. But just the same, here Paul's saying translates right to us that it's as we face those challenges, those moral decisions, as we face that challenge to be faithful to Christ above all, first and most, that then we can find the power. You know, I told you last week about how Paul, in his ministry, he was shipwrecked three times. He was beaten and scourged over and over. He was imprisoned. He was uh, in all kinds of situations and hot and in cold in danger of everything under the sun he had all these challenges and he went through all of that why because in so doing it revealed his weakness it revealed his brokenness and it caused him to have to depend on God the reason God doesn't take all of the consequences of sin away from us is so that we can remember that we are fragile and we need him his power that is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties he, he didn't say I endure he, he didn't say I, I just get by he said I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties for when I am weak then I'm strong we're always dying we're always living but there's a purpose in it we always die so that others may always live now I wish I could tell you I was smart enough to plan this sermon uh, this being right here in this part of 2nd Corinthians on Memorial Day weekend <laughs> but I'm not that smart now, what I do is go away and allow the Spirit to lead me in planning sermons. That, and it's happened over and over that the Spirit brings right, the right message at the right time. There's a lot of similarity here. The folks that go into military service, they know that their bodies are at risk. They know that their lives are may be called away from them at a way too early age in defense of our country. But they take that challenge, they accept that challenge to protect us, to give us the ability to grow up in the land of the free and the home of the brave. They often sometimes die so that others may live. Now, here in this context, we're talking about not military earthly service. We're talking about military heavenly service. And what I'm saying to you is the reality is that being a Christian is being a soldier. It's being a, a Christian army. And we are called to put our lives on the line. We're called to be willing to die so that others might live. So then, death is at work in us but life is at work in you through the dying to self through the dying to this culture we show people who are lost who haven't yet found life a different way we show them a way to come back to God we show them a better way that's why this whole passage started with verse 7 I preached on two weeks ago. You can go back and watch it. It gives you context for what I've been talking about today. But we had this treasure in jars of clay to show 
that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. What is the treasure? It is the gospel. It is that Jesus died so that sinners like you and me might own our sin, confess it, trust him by faith, and be baptized in him, into him becoming followers of his, disciples of his, so that we who were dead might be alive. That's the, the gospel. But here we see Paul has moved this from the death is at work in us so that others may live, that we might show and we might testify, we might win others who don't yet know him. Now, I know you have people that don't know him in your life. Perhaps your wife or your husband doesn't know him yet. Maybe you have a prodigal son or daughter, co-workers, extended family, neighbors. How do you reach them? Well, there's a key here. I didn't really think about this two weeks ago, but I want you to hear this key. This treasure in jars of clay, this light that we have within us of Jesus Christ, this life of light that we have in us, how can it be seen if it's in a jar? If you have a light inside a jar, how will it ever light up a room? The jar must be broken. Once broken, the light shines everywhere. So it is with us. Listen, as long as we stay in control of everything and life is good and we're in excellent health and our marriage is fine and our children are doing well and we have a good job and our friends love us and we don't have a problem in the world, or we pretend that all of that is true. We're real good at acting like we got it all together. As long as we do that, when people look at us, they'll barely see the light of Jesus within. But let the clay pot be broken. Then the beauty of the light can be clearly seen. But you say to me, the breaking hurts. Yeah. It does. But it is necessary for us to own it. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much. <laughs> Paul said in 2 Corinthians, delight in your persecutions. Now he's saying rejoice, Peter. Rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. The suffering opens up the channel for his glory to be revealed, kind of like the jar of clay that is broken then allows the light to be revealed. It's only as we die to self that we truly live, we truly light up, that Jesus can be seen in us. If you're insulted because of the name of Jesus, or Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. <laughs> it's a conditional sentence. If you suffer for Jesus, then the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Finding our purpose it's out of our brokenness the light of jesus shines clearly will that be worth it to you maybe maybe not paul would say it's worth it to me this leads me to the practical question the very pressing question how can we convince the world that jesus is alive today now you know i talk to you about apologetics all the time all of the prophecies in the Old Testament that predicted Jesus would be the Messiah, the Son of God. And then you see Jesus come and all of his fulfillment of all the different prophecies, the miracles, the teachings, his crucifixion. He's dead, truly dead, not just swooning. He is buried in a tomb. Three days later, he's out of that tomb. He appears in this resurrected body to all the people who knew him best. Over 500 people of his, uh, that followed him. And so they all agreed this was Jesus come back to life. 
Uh, I think when they started getting arrested and uh, martyred for their faith, they would have given it up if it was just made up. All of those apologetics are purpose uh, are important. There's a lot of evidence. There's a lot of reason to believe that Jesus is who he was and who he said he was. But I don't think that's enough for this age. I think in this skeptical age we live in, the very best witness the very best way we can show that Jesus is alive today is what he's talking about right here. That we live in a way carrying around the dying of Jesus, carrying around the purpose of Jesus. That we devote ourselves to being people who live with truth and grace who exude the kingdom principles, the fruit of the Spirit in life. And when our life messes up, when we get in a tough spot, we are faithful to Jesus more than less. We grow in faith as the tough get going. You know, that that's how it should be. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. It should be when the going gets tough, the faithful show up. That's when we see that's when Jesus can best be seen as living. As we endure, no, we thrive through the unthinkable. That we take anything that life brings to us, and in the name of Jesus, we accept it. No, we even delight in it. We even rejoice in it because we know that he's got our back. To live is Christ, to die is gain. So yes, we're not in Iran. Yes, we might not have to be in a jail cell for 10 years like Mehdi Dabaj, but we have the same challenges, persecutions that are just as real. And we can throw away our life. We can throw away our chance to witness by taking the easy way, the convenient way, the compromising way. Mehdi Dabaj, when he was in his trial, now imagine this setting. He's before a group of Islamic judges, and this is what he said to them. I quote, this is what he said. You can actually find it on the internet, the whole statement. I'm taking parts of it. He said, during these nine years of imprisonment, he has freed me of all the responsibilities so that under the protection of his blessed name, I would spend my time in prayer and study of his word with a searching heart and with brokenness and grow in the knowledge of my Lord. I praise the Lord for this unique opportunity. God gave me space in my confinement, brought healing in my difficult hardships, and his kindness revived me. Basically, thank you for putting me in prison, judges. He ended his statement with this incredibly brave declaration. Jesus Christ says, I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given by, to men by which we must be saved. Among the prophets of God, only Jesus Christ rose from the dead, and he is our living intercessor forever. He is our Savior and the spiritual Son of God. To know him means to know eternal life. I, a useless sinner, have believed in this beloved person and all his words and miracles recorded in the gospel, and I've committed my life into his hands. Life for me is an opportunity to serve him, and death is a better opportunity to be with Christ. Therefore, I'm not only satisfied to be in prison for the honor of his holy name, but I'm ready to give my life for the sake of Jesus, my Lord, and enter his kingdom sooner the place where the elect of God enter everlasting life, but the wicked enter into eternal damnation. And then these gracious words, may the shadow of God's kindness and his hand of blessing and healing be and remain upon you forever. Amen. With respect, your Christian prisoner, Mehdi Dabaj. I'm going to see Mehdi in heaven. and all the people he witnessed and brought with him. It is in our challenging moments 
and we find out how real our faith is. If you really want your spouse to love Jesus, then you got to live for him and die to self. If you want your kids to see Jesus, you need to die to self and live full out for him. It's this flirting with death every day that we must do. We must die to self if we want our classmates to know Jesus. We must die to self if we want this community to reflect the purposes of Jesus. It's in your life and mine that broken though we are, we are repositories of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as we get out of the way, his light shines. His light brings life. So shall it be. Father, as you speak to us, we listen. Sometimes hard words. None of us want to be unpopular. None of us want to be uh, seen as a, a radical or a Jesus freak. But I'm sure we fear the wrong things. I pray today that you've spoken to us. We've thought about what death really is. We've thought about what life really is. And we might choose life. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to become a Christian, we can help you with that. I'll be up here. Randy and Sheila. Randy's one of our elders. will be over here to visit with you. If you want to talk more about becoming a Christian, uh, a member of our church, then we can help you with that. I'm going to ask John and Ellen Friel to come up. Uh, they actually uh, met with me this week. What a great visit we had. And uh, just so happens John is a career Army guy, and they uh, just got transferred back here, been all over. I mean, it's fascinating to listen to them about all the places they've been. Uh, but they, John's actually from here. They're retiring to here, though he's going to be working uh, three more years at Fort Leavenworth. Uh, but he's going to be here on the weekends, and they just are excited. They love Jesus. It's fun talking to them about their spiritual faith. And uh, they love, uh, they're going to be greeting you, so you'll see them a lot. But they come to formally join us today. And I'm going to ask you to join my hand, the hand of fellowship, the holy huddle, I call it. All you who are believers, you're welcome to repeat this good confession with us. I believe, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is the, Christ the, Son the Son of the living God, my Lord and Savior. Lord and Father, thank you for John and Ellen and for their family. I thank you for their service to our country. I uh, thank you even more for their service to, to you and how they love you. And uh, it's just evident in their life and their witness. And I thank you for bringing them to us uh, that we might share life with them. I, I pray we might be a church family that loves them and supports them and encourages them and challenges them. And that they might use uh, their gifts and their energy to uh, help us carry on the mission here. We might make and multiply disciples better for you. Bless their home. And bless their marriage, Father, and thank you for bringing them to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome. Welcome. Y'all go back there, but y'all welcome them, okay? Come say hi. Thanks. Um, so, two things. One, I'm not just wearing a, this T-shirt because I like to wear T-shirts. This is the official VBS shirt. I'm wearing this to be a visible image I mean, if you want one of these fine shirts, volunteer. We had a lot of people sign up last week, but we're still in need. We got 55 volunteers signed up. We need about 80, so 25 more. Sixth grade and up, you can volunteer to help us with Vacation Bible School. So please, if you can, think about that. We'd love to have you. Not all those positions are teachers. Uh, if you just want to help kids, uh, then uh, do that. We expect 170, 200 kids every day, and uh, we need uh, adults and uh, teens that love them to help serve them, so help us with that. Also, this weekend, as we've made clear today, is not just about having Monday off. It is about 
uh, Memorial Day, and uh, I, in a military community like this, I, I hear of the sacrifices that military families make. I hear them all the time, uh, but certainly uh, this remembering that the reason we're free is a lot of people have paid the ultimate price. And so uh, in the group this size, I'm sure you have family members who died for our country. Uh, let's remember them. Let's praise God for them. Uh, let's lift them up and remember the purpose of this weekend. Good, uh, good to have you with us today. Let's stand. Y'all welcome John and Ellen after the service. I'm going to pray when I say the amen. We're dismissed, okay? Father, we thank you for... Uh, this model of sacrifice that you give to us that Jesus died so that all of us might live that a seed dies when it's planted and it produces a harvest I pray today we've been challenged to die to ourselves and to live for you so help us do that starting today I pray it in Jesus name amen God bless you we'll see you